Hi, gang, it's Adam. And Patrick. Coming up on today's episode, we celebrate our first Patreon anniversary with a patron-only giveaway. We cover the latest Disney news and give our spoiler-free review of Disney and Pixar's Onward. As always, we close out the show with some quick D. All that and more on today's episode of Gays Do the D. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Patrick Soros Rex Kazaki. Adam Moonbeam Hummel. I almost forgot your last name. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that little stammer? <laughs> Keeping it. Don't edit that out. I'm glad that you got Moonbeam in there, though. Well, you I always very, have Moonbeam on the tip. Very con- Oh, very confident on Moonbeam. And then you were <laughs> like, you. and your last name is... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember. Who are you again? I don't remember. I just saw you um, way too frequently mm-hmm. last night. Mm-hmm. Way too soon to see mm-hmm. you again. Feels good, doesn't it? How have you been since last night, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> I got all of my errands done this morning. Oh, good. I know Matthew was texting me from mm-hmm. Target. Yeah. Because he had to show me soda water. Well, it's a brand new brand that we were not aware of <laughs> with some really interesting flavors. So we're going to give it a shot. He excites so easily. He does. What a treat for you in a relationship. <laughs> it is. It is, actually. <laughs> He's like human Prozac. Oh. You know, he keeps you elevated at all times, which is what I need. I'd rather some human Prilosec. <laughs> <laughs> is that a thing? Is, someone? That, is that heartburn medication? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think okay, that, would be, that would be... Uh, that would be a big seller. Great. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've discovered, we've stumbled across something genius. Human Prilosec. Mm-hmm. That's also a good drag name. Human Prilosec? No, just Prilosec. Oh, Prilosec. <laughs> Prilosec? Ooh. I'm just spitballing here. Genius. It's genius to me. How are you, sir? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. Welcome back from Las Vegas. Oh, thank you. Two questions. Great. Did you enjoy it? No. Second question. Yeah. How full of Coroni V are you? <laughs> to the eyeballs. Yeah. I can't see you right now. Uh-huh. I'm so full of viruses. And I can't see you because I'm wearing a full-on hazmat suit <laughs> yeah. to ensure that I don't catch anything. Nobody got sick, turns out. Yet. Yet. I mean, Las Vegas is the crossroads of the world, Patrick. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it there. It's true. It's true. I'm already a Petri dish of just what have you. You're right. It's, it's almost like you're human penicillin. Yes. If that could be a thing, along it's with not. human Prilosec. Yeah, it's not yet. You just fight off any infection you get. <laughs> it's true. I had a great time in Vegas. Thank you so much for asking. Glad to hear it. Yeah. How was the drag show? We it all want to know. It was wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I had a wonderful time. It's so much fun. It's just a show full of love and energy. Mm. Everyone's there to have a good time and yeah. everyone did have a good time what queens did you see patrick oh good question we saw miss vangie <gasps> vangie she was absolutely amazing probably the uh, showstopper i would say i love me some vangie Derek barry was there Derek barry was he full-on britney the whole time full-on britney from head to toe the entire time why would he do anything else oh just i mean don't even try no just stop it stop trying to be anything else because that's what you do so well and he's like 60 years old in real life isn't he he's uh i don't know about he's, that <laughs> <laughs> he's getting up there to be yeah. britney that's for sure speaking of coco montrese was there <laughs> <laughs> how was her britney <laughs> yeah exactly she was a drag queen in the oh, show oh yeah i'm sure she was wonderful in her own mind but sure. and, and no she was wonderful all of these queens are at the top of their game yeah but she's uh past the top of her game i think <laughs> <laughs> she's rolling down the hill very slowly, though. Yes, she's uh, she's seen the top of the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and is slowly making her way down from the top of the mountain. It seemed the pit crew were taking very good care <laughs> not to break her hips <laughs> when they lifted her. <laughs> she's beautiful, though. She's stunning. Were her glowing blue eyes evident from the audience? <laughs> yeah, they were piercing. <laughs> piercing from the seventh row. What a natural gift she was given yeah, with those eyes. It's true. It's true. It's so natural. <laughs> Natchy. <laughs> your favorite <laughs> yeah your favorite evie oddly was there i'm sorry you hate her so much i don't know why i don't hate her i just don't <laughs> see a winner in evie oddly oh i have to say what they portrayed on the show yeah. is nothing in comparison to how she performs on stage 
she lives there. I totally believe that. Yeah. And I need to accept that into my heart <laughs> that what we see from all of the drag queens, winners or not, yeah. is on the show is not what they're capable of in a live performance. Right. It's it's sort of a truncated version of, mm-hmm. of all of the cards they have to play. And I'm sure there's like story elements that may come into play that the producers may want to nudge them into. Oh, for the sure. Show. So, yeah. you know, it's not them being them their full kind of glorious selves. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of a glorious self, Cameron Michaels was there as well. Oh. Absolutely stunning. That is the hottest as a boy drag queen, <laughs> I think. It's such a weird juxtaposition from boy to girl mm-hmm. drag. Yeah. Yeah. Because her body, I mean, his body yeah. is so cut. Yeah. And her body, I mean, talk about having to shape. Mm-hmm. You have to shape all those muscles down <laughs> right. to get it down to like a more female form. Such a wonderful dancer, too. Oh, my goodness. Yes. In fact, if Cameron Michaels had won her season, yeah. I would have been on board with that. Yeah, fully. The personality, maybe not so much there yeah. as much, but the look and the talent. Yeah. There. But who can say if that was produced out or something? You know what I mean? That's a good point, too. Yeah. Who knows? And of course, the host was Asia O'Hara. Oh, I love Asia. So funny. It's so natural with a microphone. Is she going to be on All Stars 4? I don't know. I think she will be. I don't know. She had that incident with the butterflies, though. So oh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was... It was so horrible to watch. Did she make fun of it in the live show that you saw? <laughs> no, I wish I wish that she would have come out in like a butterfly outfit yes, or something. Yes. I would have been there for that. You need to lean into those moments when they happen. No, they are sweeping those butterflies right <laughs> under the carpet. <laughs> oh, that was just a terrible, terrible choice. Yeah, butterflies were harmed in this <laughs> in this filming. <laughs> Poor Asia, but she was a fantastic host. Well, I'm so glad you had so much fun in Vegas. Thank you very much. I have to also give a shout out to the Vanderpump bar in Vegas. <laughs> do you? I do. I, I love Lisa <laughs> Vanderpump so much. <laughs> Speaking of drag queens. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> exactly. No, that bar is fantastic. If you get a chance to go see it, it's beautiful. Is it? Oh my gosh. And the hosts and the servers are all beautiful people. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I have no idea what the Vamber, Vamberpump, Vamberpump, <laughs> I have no idea what the Vamber Pump world kind of encapsulates, but I picture that when you walk into the bar, you just get a drink thrown into your face immediately. Yeah, for sure. Very, very dramatic. Mm-hmm. And then you sit down and have a nice experience. It's true. It's true. You heard it here. The Vamber Pump <laughs> bar. That's the bar that you're going to open in Vegas. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good drag name, too. Vamber Pump. Vamber Pump. <laughs> That's Amber with a V. (laughs) The V is silent. The V is very loud. (laughs) So thank you so much for asking about Vegas, Adam. Absolutely. I'm glad to have you back. I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we need to welcome some new listeners to the podcast, Patrick. Quite a few, actually. New listeners. You know, people have reached out to us saying... How do you get mentioned as a new listener on the podcast? Like, are you tracking new listeners? And we're not, because there's not really a way we can do that. No, just the loud ones (laughs) we're tracking. (laughs) These are people that have reached out to us via DM or in an Instagram post and have just said, hey, just discovered the podcast. I'm really enjoying it. Or I want to take you all down. (laughs) But we still give them a shout out because, (laughs) hey, they downloaded the episode. It's true. Joke's on you, folks. (laughs) So we need to welcome Cesar, who you can find on Instagram at Prism Viper. Ooh, I'm all about both names. Yeah. I'm suddenly turned on by Cesar. Cesar. Is it Cesar or Caesar? I don't care. Either one. I think it's Cesar. I'm hungry either way. <laughs> for a salad or a for a Cesar. Oh. <laughs> Another new listener, Nikki from Instagram, Nicole713. We also need to welcome Josh, who you can find on Instagram at Fiedler on the Roof. Clever. Very clever. I like it. Welcome, Josh. Welcome, Josh. Also, Bailey on Instagram, Bay Mary B. And last but not least, the WG, mm. who you can find on Instagram at I am the white G. Oh my. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't either. It's a little unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there a different colored G? Maybe. Okay. I'm getting White Walker realness. Oh. I don't know if that's if that's possible in the I'm real world. I'm getting the shivers. Yeah. But thank you for listening. I am the White G. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening, all of the new listeners. Yes, thank you so much. Well, Adam, we should also mention our old listeners. <laughs> Our elderly listeners who have been much, with us. <laughs> much like the hosts of this podcast. Yes, much like... So Coco Montres <laughs> is writing into us. <laughs> she is not listening to this podcast. She's she can't like, hear it. What That's is why. A, what is a podcast? <laughs> She'd have to put her hearing aid on to yeah. listen to it. She yep. can't hear us very well. 
Coco, check your battery. <laughs> We're ageist. Mm-hmm. We are ageist. Yeah, but anytime we can get in a sister act joke, yes, it's a good day. Well, then I welcome. I welcome it. <laughs> Where was I going with all of this, Adam? Who can say? <laughs> You're going way back to episode 76. That's right. Our <laughs> Fab Five watering holes. We had some listener feedback. They wanted to get in our holes. They desperately want in our holes. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to let them in. First, going back to I am the white G. I love it. A new listener and immediately contributing to the conversation. Something old, something new. That's right. A borrowed statement. (laughs) If it's sad, I'll be blue. Is that the saying? Sure. Okay, great. Moving on. (laughs) I am the white G says, tuned into your favorite holes episode. Oh, dear. I like you already. Yep. And your picks are all fantastic lounges. Thank you so much. I want to add, if you want a quiet lounge to relax in on a night, particularly if you want to grab some drinks before hopping a short boat ride to Magic Kingdom for fireworks, Territory Lounge in the Wilderness Lodge is perfect. Usually pretty quiet, good atmosphere and location away from the atrium, and they have wonderful food and drink choices. If you have the opportunity and you haven't already done so, you can order the Berry Cobbler from the Old Artist Point. It is not to be missed. It takes a while for them to make it, so order it when you first sit down for a drink. Happy gaying. Berry Cobbler. That sounds delicious. What if I just had them put the Berry Cobbler in a martini glass and pour vodka over the top of it? It's Disney. They can do anything you want. You're right. <laughs> and Territory Lounge in the Wilderness Lodge is a place I have not been. In fact, the Wilderness Lodge, I have to admit, is a place I have not been. Same here. It is a place I would love to stay or at least experience. I hear during the holidays, it's exceptionally beautiful. Wait, where is the hoop doo Review? The hoop doo Review is on the grounds of Fort Wilderness. Oh, okay. But it's a completely separate building. Got it, got it, got it. So same area, mm-hmm. different location in that area. Yep. Got it. Eddie and Irving also wrote in. You can find Eddie and Irving on Instagram at Discussing D Plus Pod. Mm. They sent us their Fab Five. Number five, Scat Cats Lounge at the French Quarter. The Baton Rouge beignets are to die for. Mm. Number four, Oga's Cantina. We love a good mouth numbing drink. Fair, fair. Referring to the fuzzy tauntaun. <laughs> oh, is that what they're talking about? Yep. JK. Number three, Disneyland's Trader Sam. Size queens like the bigger one. Oh, dear. Yeah. I can't handle all that, Sam. (laughs) Number two, Carthay Circle Lounge. We do New Year's Eve every year at DCA, and this bar is the best place to stay warm and get tipsy before the countdown. (laughs) And number one, Lamplight Lounge. Best view of the parks and the nachos are to die for. We usually get one order each because I don't like to share. Fair enough. I'm the same way. So delicious, those nachos. They're so good. Those are great choices, Eddie and Irving. Thank you for sending those in. Thanks, everybody. Moving forward to episode 77, Patrick, we had an email last week from Auntie Myrna who was wondering if any of our Tweedledees have had Disney weddings, and Scott wrote in, you can find Scott on Instagram at papa.scooter, Scott says, I'm getting married at the Polly on July 15th in the morning, followed by brunch at Trader Sam's and a fireworks dessert party at the Grand Floridian. Everything was booked directly with Disney weddings. That sounds fantastic. A full day, a full Disney wedding day. I love it. I love it. And Congratulations to you, Scott. Yeah, we can't wait to hear all about it after the fact. And as Patrick mentioned back in episode 77, we do need to get a Disney Weddings episode Yes, put together so that we can hear about everybody's fantastic stories from their weddings. Absolutely. So, Scott, we are counting on you to send us your story. Speaking of call-outs... Adam, yes. we should do a call out for an upcoming episode. We are planning another Questions and Peter Pansers episode very soon. Yes, so we need all of our listeners to send in your questions regarding Disney, regarding our personal lives, Yes, regarding Disney and our personal lives. All of it. You know, Patrick, the Questions and Peter Pansers episodes are our most popular episodes. Is that a fact? They get downloaded the most and the quickest. People want the tea. They want the tea and they want the D. Oh, my. <laughs> Don't ever shake your head like that when you say that. For those listening at home, I did do a side-to-side head movement. You had a full hula hoop around your neck. I did. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I did. So please send in your questions for an upcoming Questions and Peter Pansers segment. Where can they send those questions, Adam? They can send us their questions via social media. That's Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at GDTD Podcast. Or one of our favorite ways is to leave us a voice memo or an email at info at gazedothed.com. 
Before we move on, Patrick, I just want to mention really quickly that for those listeners that don't know, we have a merch store. We do. It is available via our website, gazedothed.com, and you can just click on the merch tab at the top of the screen, and that will take you to our T Public store. And we have a fun little announcement. We've just become affiliate members, and that means that we can now pick and choose our favorite designs from all across the T Public site. I love it. And include them in our store. And if you actually purchase one of those designs through our site, we actually get a commission from it, as does the artist who originally designed it. Yes, of course, a little kickback for us and for them. So when you have a moment, hop into our merch store at gazethroughthed.com slash merch and help support the podcast. And if you are a designer on TeePublic, let us know. We would love to feature your shirts. Yes. What a great suggestion, Patrick. I'm very wise. So wise. So wise. Speaking of wise, Adam, we have an old anniversary to talk about today. A wise old anniversary. A wise old anniversary featuring a wise old owl. Care to venture a guess on what movie I'm talking about? Oh my God. An owl in a movie. (laughs) In a Disney movie. In a Disney movie. There's never been such a thing. Is it a Winnie the Pooh movie? It is. (gasps) The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh? It is. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I love that movie so much. Winnie the Pooh is turning 43 years old on March 11th. Doesn't look a day over 32. (laughs) It's true. Same for me. Uh, No. No. One day over. One day over 32. One day over. Winnie the Pooh was released in 1977. I love when we have an anniversary for a movie that came out before I was born. (laughs) I feel so young. Uh... There's not many. (laughs) Okay. There's not a lot. (laughs) There's a huge catalog of movies, actually. Masterpieces, classics, Patrick, that came out before I was born. It's true. You just missed the masterpiece cutoff. (laughs) I (laughs) know. What? Are you talking about just movies or me physically as well? Listen, whatever you want to hear is what you want to hear. Genetics not working in my favor. <laughs> not working in my favor. Happy anniversary, Winnie the Pooh. Happy anniversary. Now shove that bear aside, Adam, because we have a bigger anniversary to talk about. We do. It's us. What? <laughs> we have an anniversary? We do. We have been on Patreon for one full year now. Time flies, Patrick. Time flies and cash be flying in. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we have 38 cents now. <laughs> oh, no. We're actually quite wealthy. <laughs> Aren't we? Well, isn't that I how... didn't mean to laugh so quickly that... <laughs> after that. <laughs> that is nowhere near the case. Oh, okay. But we do have a Patreon page for those who don't know Mm -hmm. where for as little as one dollar reoccurring per month you can become part of our patreon family which will get you some extra bonuses like extra episodes yes what's that extra episode called adam gaze do the d raw and uncut oh dear (laughs) (laughs) and oh we've just lost all of our patrons that's so weird so weird no we do have extras like that and we are introducing a new extra adam for the first time ever to celebrate our one year anniversary on patreon we are giving away what a 50 dollar disney gift card to one lucky patreon family member 50 doll hairs Nope. Dollars, Adam. Fifty dollars. There it is. This is very exciting. I'm excited. Can I win? Am I a pa- Oh, I'm not a patron. You're not. I don't give back to us at all. You don't. I take. I take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do not give back. <laughs> no, you're a contributor sometimes. Wow. To the podcast. Wow. When your voice goes up like that. I do not believe you. This is incredibly exciting, Patrick. Yes. We have never given out a gift card before, and this is a great way to celebrate all of our patrons who now have a chance to win this $50 gift card. And frankly, it saves on postage. It certainly does. We should just do this from now on. Maybe we should. People love that cold, hard Disney cash. It's true. They can buy whatever they want. They don't have to have our secondhand garbage anymore. Yeah. What does $50 at Disney buy you? So many Mickey pretzels. Some Mickey pretzels. One and three quarters pair of Mickey ears, maybe. (laughs) One drink in the Grand Floridian somewhere. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. Or anything on the Disney Store merch site. So many options open to you. Options upon options. All right, Adam, are we ready to announce the winner? We're so ready. We were born ready. We need a special drum roll, I think. (gasps) It's your favorite thing in the episodes i do i do love this moment every single giveaway are you doing it or am i doing it you're doing it okay good good that's the right answer here's the drum roll yeah 
Did you like it? <laughs> was that it? It serves two purposes. It I sure had a frog did. in my throat, uh-huh. and it was a good drum roll. Your microphone foam is just covered in <laughs> phlegm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. And we're going to give that away next week. <laughs> my microphone cover. <laughs> yep. So the winner of a $50 Disney gift card mm-hmm. is John W. John W. Everyone knows who John W. is. What a last name. We'd give away his Instagram handle, but we don't want people to fight him for that gift card. That would be rough. Also, we want to keep our patrons anonymous, don't you think? We do. Patrons like O. Winfrey deserve their privacy <laughs> in this podcast. G. Paltrow. G. Paltrow. We won't mention goop.com. his or her name. We won't do it. Yeah. We won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, John. I will reach out to you to let you know that you're getting a gift card, whether you like it or not. That's true. And we should mention John's across the pond. John is across the pond. That's a fun sentence to say. John's across the pond. He's sometimes across the other way in our land. Wait, what? But then he also, I think he travels back and forth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's a pond hopper. He's a pond hopper. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said that so much more eloquently, but I did not. It was a fun journey to get there, though. It was a long walk around the block to tell you that John is, I don't know if he has dual citizenship. We're getting very into the details of John. <laughs> I love how we were like, we're not going to mention his last name. But here's where he works. Here's his blood type. <laughs> and here's his social security number. I guess he doesn't have a social security number because he's not a resident. Or is he? Man, this journey is long. Wow. Wow. And ridiculous. John, you're getting $50 from Disney. So stop complaining, John. And us, yeah. I can hear it already. John, stop. You're welcome, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, congratulations, John. And thank you to all of our Patreon members. Stay tuned. More giveaways to come. You know what else is to come? Immediately. Oh, my. <laughs> Do you know what's coming immediately, Patrick? Please end this sentence. The news. <laughs> there it is. I'm so glad you said the news. <laughs> With the spread of the coronavirus closing international Disney parks in China and Japan, it was only a matter of time before the United States would be dealing with the spread of the virus. Last week, California Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency after the first death from the coronavirus in the Golden State. Similarly, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis issued an executive order to declare a public health emergency and engage statewide response for the control of coronavirus, also known as coronavirus. COVID-19. On Tuesday, March 3rd, a spokesperson for the Walt Disney Company addressed sanitation and cleanliness in Walt Disney World. The spokesperson stated, we have very stringent sanitation procedures in place at Walt Disney World Resort. We are in close contact with health agencies for information and guidance. And at this time, we are continuing to communicate to our cast the importance of of preventative measures such as frequent hand washing and rigorous cleaning processes. For guest convenience, we have placed additional hand sanitizers throughout our parks and resorts and will adjust our protocols as the situation warrants. And Patrick, I think we can assume the same measures are being taken at Disneyland Resort as well. One would assume. So it's great to hear that the parks are being very careful when it comes to the spread of this disease. I'm so impressed with how clearly you delivered that news with your face mask on. (laughs) Have you been washing your hands regularly? I never do. Okay. That's a problem. What? What do you mean? Have you been touching your face regularly? I always do. Yeah. For 20 seconds. Yeah. Is that how you're supposed to do it? You just Mm -hmm. rub your face for 20 seconds? Yep. With peanut butter. That is on the CDC's list of approved products (laughs) to kill the virus. Good. (laughs) Last week, we reported that Disney World may or may not be getting a new dining plan, and this week, we can officially report that they did, in fact, get a new dining plan added to their tier of current dining plans called the Disney Dining Plan Plus. Named after the original Disney Dining Plan, which gets you one quick service and one table service meal per day, along with two snacks and one refillable resort mug, the Dining Plan Plus gets you all of that, plus the option to use your two dining credits for either two quick service, two table service, a combination of each, or use both credits for a character dining meal. 
I went online for some price comparisons and in April for a four night stay with park tickets for two adults on a dining plan, the Disney dining plan will cost you $624 on top of the resort and ticket fees. The Disney dining plan plus will cost you $756, which is a $132 leap from one plan to the next, which in my opinion can be a good value, but only if you use it for two table service meals at least one day on your trip. If you use quick service and a table service each day, or if you use both credits to do a character meal on each day, you are essentially paying $132 more for nothing additional beyond the knowledge that you could have gotten more for your money. Two table service meals a day. That's a long time out of your day. That is a long time out of your day, and it's a lot to ask of your belly. (laughs) It's true, because they do be feeding you at the table service. Wouldn't you just constantly be groggy and kind of walking around in a food coma haze? That's me generally. That's a good point. (laughs) So minimally, you are just paying for the convenience of more options while you stay on property. So it's not a bad deal if you work it. So throw your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Oh, my. Missy Elliott, anybody? I know her. I love her. Okay, great. Great, great, great. She's family. You know that, right? She is family? Is she declared publicly she's family? I believe so. You are outing Missy Elliott on our podcast? (laughs) I believe she outed herself a while ago. Oh. And that's the news, Adam. (laughs) (laughs) In a Wednesday, March 4th, 2020 exclusive, Variety reported that Adam Shankman, director of films like 2007's Hairspray, Step Up, A Walk to Remember, and most recently, What Men Want, starring Taraji P. Henson, has been tapped by Disney to direct Hocus Pocus 2 for Disney+. Plus. This feels like a really good choice. Excellent choice. Yeah. Also, I love saying Taraji P. Henson. I love Taraji. She's amazing. Maybe Taraji should be in Hocus Pocus 2. I was literally just going to say that. I think we can make it happen. (laughs) We have the connections. It's true. Hocus Pocus 2 will be a sequel to the 1993 cult hit Hocus Pocus starring Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimy. And, as we previously reported, will be written by Workaholics writer and co-producer Jen D'Angelo. According to Variety, quote, the original Hocus Pocus cast members are not attached to the sequel, but Disney is hopeful that they will become involved in some capacity. Adam Shankman will also be directing the long-in-development Enchanted sequel for Disney, entitled Disenchanted. Amy Adams is expected to return for the sequel, which is set 10 years after the first film, with Giselle finding herself questioning her happily ever after life and accidentally triggering events that make everyone's lives turn upside down in both the real world and in the animated kingdom of Andalasia. David Stern and David Weiss, the two Davids, wrote the script. No word yet on whether Disenchanted will be a feature film or will premiere on Disney+. Plus. So Adam Shankman, hoarding Disney projects, <laughs> hoarding two really big Disney projects, yeah. and I would say two Disney projects that are embraced by the LGBTQ plus community. Highly anticipated projects, for sure. I'm so excited, but let's face it, Disenchanted, I mean, I think they first mentioned that like in 2007. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's been a while. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Do you think our three ladies are going to come back for Hocus Pocus 2? Yes. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. You heard it here first, folks. Yes. All three back for the sequel in some kind of fashion. <laughs> Maybe not for the full movie, but they'll just like pop in. Well, we put it out into the world like the secret. You're right. Well done, Adam. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy and Jimmy, and now Taraji. Taraji. <laughs> <laughs> the Seas with Nemo and Friends Pavilion is still refusing to update their main attraction, no matter how many letters I send. <laughs> But (laughs) what (laughs) they are getting a new experience. Mm -hmm. As of March 1st, guests can now dive into the new scavenger hunt, Finding Dory's Friends. Guests can pick up booklets on the first floor of the pavilion that will take them on a deep sea adventure, solving puzzles and looking for clues to help Dory locate and remember the names of her marine friends. Along the way, you will collect stickers and learn fun facts about the ocean animals that make their home within the pavilion and the world at large. This experience is free of charge and will be running all day, early day. Early day. Early day. 
who are Dory's friends? What prominent lesbians are they going to be <laughs> locating in the Seas Pavilion? Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott will be there. <laughs> Here's something that will get one million moms all riled up. Oh, dear. According to the March 6th, 2020, The Hollywood Reporter exclusive, Luke Evans and Josh Gad are set to reprise their roles from 2017's Beauty and the Beast for a limited prequel series at Disney+. Plus. Evans will star as Gaston, with Gad returning as Gay LeFou, the untitled project... <laughs> Is that, is that his name? Friend of Dory, <laughs> Gay LeFou. <laughs> the Untitled Project, which is currently in early development, would be a six-episode musical with Once Upon a Time creators Eddie Kitsis and Adam Horowitz set to co-write and serve as showrunners. Gad would also serve as co-writer on the project, with he, Horowitz, and Kitsis also executive producing. Horowitz, Kitsitz, and Gad had previously collaborated on a planned Muppets scripted series at Disney+, Plus, but that project was scrapped late last year after Disney announced at D23 in August that they were moving forward on a short-form unscripted Muppets series titled Muppets Now. No other stars from the film, like Emma Watson and Dan Stevens, are currently attached, though sources say there is a possibility that they could pop in for a guest spot. Composer Alan Menken is still in talks to write new music for the show. Luke Evans, huh? <laughs> yeah. Man alive. Yeah. That dude. He better be shirtless in a few scenes. I hope the whole series is just LeFou giving him massages, foot rubs. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's LeFou's fantasy. Mm, it's my fantasy. <laughs> oh, and it's 3D. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate the opening of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the trendy pop culture retailer Box Lunch has released a set of exclusive styles inspired by the new attraction. New t-shirts are available for pre-sale online at boxlunch.com and will be available in stores later this month. Later this year, a full collection of exclusive double M double R merch will be available both online and in stores. Mm -er. That's what they should just shorten it to. Mm -er. Did you get a fast pass for mer? Mer. Yes, I did. <laughs> if you've never shopped at Box Lunch before, it's important to know that with every $10 spent, Box Lunch will donate a dollar to their philanthropic partner, Feeding America. Through Feeding America, one dollar provides at least 10 meals to people in need. From now through January 31st, 2021, Box Lunch has committed to a minimum of 5 million meals donated through Feeding America, equaling a minimum of $500,000 in donations. I absolutely love Box Lunch. I have roughly 15 shirts from them, which means I have helped serve at least 100 meals. I'm such a good person. Debatable. That's debatable. That's fair. But my shirt collection is not debatable. There are at least 15 of them. This is also the time we should mention we are in no way affiliated with Box Lunch. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> but please send us all of your merch and yes. we'll review it on the podcast. Ooh, I like that idea. They won't do it. They no. have no idea who we are. Nobody does. Not even Missy Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, long ago, the world was full of wonder. <laughs> it was adventurous. There was magic. But as you mentioned at the top of the episode, not so long ago, we saw Onward. What a treat that opening Thank you. segue was. Very dramatic, right? Yeah, I loved it. It's actually how the movie begins, if you recall. What a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a spoiler. <laughs> it's or true. Is it? Maybe. Maybe. You'll have to watch the movie and find out. I did watch the movie. I watched the movie last night with you. Oh, I was not aware you were there. I was right next to you. Oh, I was not aware <laughs> of anything. <laughs> Because I was so enthralled with oh, the movie. I like how you turned that around. Turned it. Yes, now is the time, Patrick. Now is the time we give our spoiler-free review of Disney and Pixar's latest release, Onward. I have been looking forward to this movie for so long. Me too. And now it's over and I have nothing... Nothing left to live for. Nothing to dream about anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We should remind all of our listeners, as with our previous reviews, this is spoiler-free, so we will not be addressing any major plot points. It's true. But we'll certainly be covering moments you may have seen in the trailer and be giving kind of a high-level overview of the film as a whole. 
yes, we will be giving you our opinions on the whole <laughs> movie. <laughs> the whole movie. Mm -hmm. So before we dive into the creative team and the cast for the movie, Patrick, mm -hmm. let's kind of give that overview of the film's plot, which everyone has seen in the trailer, which is two elf brothers, Ian and Barley Lightfoot. Yes. Receive a staff from their late father that when paired with a stone and a spell written by their father gives them the ability to bring their father back for one day. But unfortunately, the spell goes a little bit wrong and they have to go on a quest to find a new stone so they can experience that moment with their father. Well, that's the whole movie, Adam. You're right. You just gave away the whole movie. Oh, I did not. <laughs> things happen. Other things happen. Things happen that you don't need to know about, but that's <laughs> the gist of the movie. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed the whole journey of the movie. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was a fantastic hero's quest, basically. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was thoughtful. I thought it was poignant. It was well-written. And it could have easily been very saccharine mm, yeah. or it could have easily been the opposite and just sort of just an adventure uh -huh. quest but it was a really nice i thought mix of the two it was sentimental and epic at the same time and funny so funny i mean there were moments when you and i were both loling in that theater yeah as pixar's want to do they have so many hidden gems mm -hmm. in the movie that yeah. just make you laugh out loud unless you miss them because they're so quick mm -hmm. when they happen I really loved the movie, and I don't want what I'm about to say to be taken negatively, mm. but this did not seem like a Pixar film to me. For some reason, it didn't click into Pixar. Mm, okay. And that isn't a good or a bad thing. For some reason, it just didn't feel fully Pixar to me, and I don't know why. Maybe you can help me kind of figure that out as we go through this review. I think it was sort of the speed and the tone of the movie, where yeah. it sort of was a relaxed movie, whereas like a Toy Story movie is just sort of go, 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 go. But didn't this one feel go, 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 too? Like, they were really on that quest. Yeah, but I thought it just sort of, like I said, sort of relaxed into the story a little uh -huh. bit more. They weren't going for punchlines all the time. Yeah. Uh, and so when they did happen, they were very funny and needed. That's a good point. We got to see the movie with your lovely husband, Dan, and my boyfriend, Matthew. And Matthew was commenting after the film that what stood out the most to him was the fact that we were kind of really focused on a teenager's story in the movie. Yeah, that's a good point. Oftentimes in a Pixar movie, they're children or... A Fish. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, or adult non-humans, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. This is sort of the middle ground of the two. And it felt that way. It felt um, it felt a little bit more grown up. It did. As a Pixar movie. It did. It was a very adult-centric storyline. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't know that a lot of kids under the age of 12 or 13 are going to grasp onto the main point of the movie. Yeah. But they will, I still think, love the movie because of, well, just the fact that it's a Pixar and Disney movie. It's got that family-friendly feel to it. But this was definitely a heavy topic. It was. And for anyone who's experienced the loss of a loved one in their life, but specifically the loss of a father, I think it will really speak to you and kind of the feelings that are tied to that experience. Yeah, as we all know, Disney and Pixar really love to kill parents. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't love to talk about it right. so much. It just right. sort of happens and they move on. Right. And this was all about coping, which I think every single person in that theater above the age of 15 or 16 was a mess at the end of the movie and all the way through the movie, kind of. Yeah, and as you just alluded to, not only did they deal with it and deal with coping, but the way they handled it was very unique and in particular kind of a surprise when it came to the ending of how everything kind of wrapped up and the choices that were made by the characters. Yeah, without giving away too much, as you just said, I was definitely shook at the end of it with the decisions that were made. I was just like, did not see that coming. What a grown up plot twist. Yes, it was a very grown up plot twist. It was it was so well done. It was so well done. So should we dive into the creative team behind this lovely, lovely film? Let's do it, Patrick. Let's go on a grand and glorious quest. Onward we go. We stole that from the movie. <laughs> Spoiler. There's another spoiler. We, we steal everything we say, Adam. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we say is unique. <laughs> so diving right in, taking credit for direction and one of the screenplay credits is Dan Scanlon, who is most famous for directing Monsters University. 
That's right. And the actual story is very loosely based on his experience with losing his father and his brother and his kind of coming to terms with that experience. I would say it's actually very tightly based on his experience. Except for the elves and the magic. Except for that part. Except for that part. But yes, for those that don't know, Dan and his brother lost their father when they were both very young. I believe Dan was one year old when his father passed away. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a family friend of theirs who one day delivered an audio cassette recording to the brothers. And on the cassette recording, they could hear their father saying two words, hi and bye. And that was the only time they were ever actually able to hear his their father's voice. It's true. If you are a member of D23 and you subscribe to the magazine, he gives a really lovely interview in that magazine. It's very much worth reading. And he tells that whole story. And I was, before I saw the movie, reading that and just sobbing all the way through the article because um, yeah. it's so beautiful. And it really rings true in the movie. Like that one tape recording sort of sets up the entire movie and it's really really beautifully done it really is moving on the other two credits for screenplay go to jason headley who is credited for a bad idea goes wrong and keith boonin who wrote horns and in treatment I loved In Treatment. Did you watch In Treatment? It's it's really great. It's so, so good. Yeah, and the movie, have you seen the movie Horns with um, Daniel Radcliffe? I haven't. It's really good, actually. It's is dark, that, yeah. for sure. That Daniel Radcliffe, I mean, this is a side note completely, but that Daniel Radcliffe sure does make some interesting film choices after the Harry Potter situation, doesn't he? He's all over the map. He's all over the map, but I applaud his decision to kind of dive into more artistic films. Are you saying Harry Potter is not artistic, Adam? Spotlight on Adam. <laughs> People are going to come for you. I haven't seen them all. Yeah, I still haven't <laughs> seen the last one. So, Well, that's why we're not yep. as good of friends as we yep. could be. <laughs> Onward was produced by Pete Doctor and Corey Ray. And I just want to give a special shout out to Jeff and Michael Dana. They're actually brothers. Michael received the Academy Award for Best Original Score for Life of Pi in 2012. And both brothers were composers for the music for The Good Dinosaur. Yeah, the music was really lovely and played a huge part in this movie. And wide-ranging, too. There was kind of like that kind of mythical quest music you would expect, Mm -hmm. but then also hard rock. Yes. (laughs) It was a great mix of different music styles. It's true. It was like Medieval Kiss. Medieval Kiss. (laughs) I want to see it. Okay. I want to see it. I think we did see it last night. (laughs) I want to see it at a Renaissance Fair. (laughs) Moving on to the cast. Mm Mm-hmm. We have Tom Holland. I don't even, should I even bring up Tom Holland or do you want to take Tom Holland? You want to take Tom Holland. I mean, Tom Holland's bringing up me, if you know what I mean. (laughs) Tom Holland voiced the character Ian Lightfoot. We all know Tom from Spider Man and the Marvel movies. And he actually voiced Walter in last year's Spies in Disguise, which was part of the acquisition that Disney made from Fox. It's true. He did a really lovely job. I was. A little hesitant going in because I, I I like him a lot. Um, I think he's a great actor, but not everyone is a great voice actor. That's an excellent point. And I was thinking the same thing driving home last night. It takes a lot to be a really strong voice actor, and he's got it. Like he just has that natural understanding of story and how to tell a story vocally. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got it. He he totally pulled it off and was excellent in this film. Watch out for that one. He's going places. He's going places. I think he's going places. He's going to make a name for himself yet. Moving on to the second half of the brothership that is the Lightfoots, Chris Pratt plays Barley Lightfoot. Where have we seen Chris Pratt, Adam? He's a newcomer. He's a newcomer. (laughs) Yeah, an up-and-comer Yep, from Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, and one of my favorite shows, Parks and Rec. Fantastic as Andy in Parks and Rec. So funny. He was really strong in this movie, and I think Barley obviously was very suited to Chris Pratt in that kind of like meathead slash Dungeons and Dragons playing kind of older brother situation. Yeah, it seems as though the role was written for him to play it. Mm -hmm. Ironically, Tom Holland was cast first. As Barley? No. (laughs) (laughs) I thought Chris did a great job in the movie. Not as strong, I would say, as Tom Holland's performance. It's not as heavy of a role, though. That's what I was just thinking. There's not that kind of emotional connection behind it. Mm -hmm. But kind of, as the movie goes on. Oh, for sure. It's there, absolutely. But he didn't have to do much of the heavy lifting emotionally. He was there very comedically, though. 
Julia Louis-Dreyfus voices the brother's mother, Laurel Lightfoot. Of course, we know Julia from Seinfeld and my favorite, Veep. She also voiced Queen Atta in 1998's A Bug's Life. And who could forget her as the Blue Fairy in 2000's Geppetto, which was made for the wonderful world of Disney, co-starring Drew Carey. I could forget her in that role. (laughs) (laughs) Did you watch that? I did not. I did not. I can't recommend it. Okay, great. What a weird time 2000 was. (laughs) Drew Carey was starring in a Disney made for TV movie. Interesting. Interesting. You know, you may also know Julia Louis-Dreyfus from the Emmy Awards. Every single Emmy Award ever? (laughs) Yes. She is a featured actress in the Emmy Awards. She, like Tom Holland, also has a really good grasp of like what it takes to have a really strong vocal delivery for an animated movie. Yes, I was sort of teetering on whether or not I needed her in the mm, movie. Mm-hmm. But then I was thinking, that's actually praise for how good she did because you sort of forget that it's her. Mm, yeah, that's a really good point. Do you know what I mean? She just sort of wraps herself around that character and you don't need it to be anybody famous. Mm-hmm. She just delivered a really strong performance. One thing that struck me about her, and as we continue on through the characters, there's another character that she kind of teams up with in the film, was that you know it's a male-centric story for the most part, but the secondary storyline with the females in the film is is also very, very strong. Like, it's a really good kind of companion to the main story arc. That's a really good point. This movie is all about relationships, for Mm -hmm. sure. And they served us quite a few relationships to watch throughout the movie. Yeah, and they were kind of jockeying different positions, like, within the relationships that we saw on screen. Like, there was a lot of interaction between all of the characters Mm -hmm. and really good representation I know it's a mythical world, (laughs) but it felt like there were a lot of different personalities represented, and it was fun to see them all kind of come together and kind of go on this journey together. It's true. As you were saying, although it is a mythical world, we are dealing with a very diverse cast, which was so lovingly represented throughout the film. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Speaking of, moving on, we have Octavia Spencer, who... I love her so much. I want to be her best friend. Octavia plays the Manticore. Of course, Octavia is very well known for movies like Ma, Hidden Figures, The Help, Zootopia, and The Shape of Water. Amongst hundreds and hundreds of other credits, this woman is phenomenal. She has an Oscar, Patrick. She does. You have to say Oscar (laughs) winner, Octavia Spencer. Fair enough, fair enough. It's like when you have to refer to someone as a dame. Hmm. She's Oscar winner. Oscar winner. Spencer. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see Pixar kind of reach into their grab bag of vocal performers, because here we're seeing, again, repeats that we've known and loved from movies before. And going back to Octavia, you know, this is the relationship I was mentioning. She kind of partners up with Laurel Lightfoot, the boy's mother at one point, and it's just fun to see their dynamic together. Yeah, she is another voice actor in this movie who I sort of forgot it was her halfway through the film Yeah, because she was delivering such a lovely performance. I think it also speaks to the animators too, like their level of wrapping that voice in a fully formed character Mm. and kind of the more you see the character, the more you're able to separate the well-known voice performer behind it. Yeah, for sure. Mel Rodriguez voiced Colt Bronco, who is Laurel Lightfoot's boyfriend in the film. Mel plays Ernie Gomes in On Becoming a God in Central Florida and Todd Rodriguez in The Last Man on Earth. And I'm not familiar with his work, actually. Yeah, I did have to look him up because I didn't see any of his credits, actually, other than a role in a great TV show, Better Call Saul. Oh, yeah. But he was an interesting choice for this role because it's quite a hefty role in the movie. And he is not a super well-known actor. That's true. And it's also a very interesting character because he's not beloved necessarily by all the characters Mm -hmm. so that's another really interesting dynamic and kind of layer that they've brought into the story it's that things aren't all like shiny and wonderful there's some real conflict that's going on within this family yeah it was an interesting character and then i never knew where he was going or what side he was on it was a really um well done but muddied relationship yeah like real life i mean it was like a real life dynamic yeah it's like our friendship (laughs) (laughs) jk we all know we're not friends (laughs) it's very clear (laughs) you're so right paul (laughs) 
Moving on, we have Kyle Bornheimer, who plays Wilden Lightfoot, the boy's father, who has been in a million TV shows as an extra, but he's currently on one of my new favorite shows, Avenue 5. This guy is so funny. I love to watch him on screen. He's also very hot. I find him very, very attractive in real life. Oh, yeah. He has got hot dad yes going for him for yeah. sure it's kind of like a patrick warburton vibe from oh him. okay like physically anyway but i just find him so dreamy and i have for years and years and years interesting i would never pair the two of them in a similarity contest i think it's just the dad thing it's not like that they look identical it's just that kind of like big kind of dad sitch got it okay <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about the same person at all yes we are we are Next up, we have Lena Waithe, who voices Officer Spectre. We know Lena from Ready Player One and Masters of None on Netflix, and she created the series The Chi, or Chai, I don't know which one it is, but it's referencing Chicago. <laughs> yes. So, and I'm sorry about that. But anyway, that's supposed to be a phenomenal series as well. And as everyone knows, probably at this point, Lena voices the first openly LGBTQ plus character in a Pixar film. It's true. And I really enjoyed that we got more than one second. Yeah. <laughs> just a glimpse of an lgbtq plus character it's interesting how you know in star wars the rise of skywalker we were so disappointed by that kind of flash of a moment yeah a half of a second of an lgbtq plus relationship mm -hmm. and we got more of it in an animated film we got more of a sense of a character's background and who they are in an animated film. It's true. It was an interesting choice because they had no reason really to make this character very out, right. I guess. Yeah. Um, but the fact that they did it, I was I was really impressed with it. I wonder if she had a hand in that because the line refers to her girlfriend. It just happens like in a moment. Although you're kind of always wondering when she first comes on screen, you're like, I think she's a lesbian. <laughs> but she refers to her girlfriend. And I wonder if Lena was like, let's just change that to I want it to be a girlfriend. Otherwise, I won't do it. Yeah, could be. Who knows? She kind of has that power. She's very, very well respected in the Hollywood community. And we're best friends, so I should know. You are? Yeah. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Just like how I know how to pronounce her series, The Cheer Child. <laughs> yeah, you're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, because of this character's orientation, One Million Moms is up in arms and has boycotted the film. I'm sure it's going to be a real negative in Disney's bank account that yeah. they're all standing up against this one second of a mention of a girlfriend in a lesbian relationship. I hate One Million Moms, Patrick. I oh. Hate I hate them. I can hear them marching from here. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we have Ali Wong playing Officer Gore. Ali Wong is so funny. She is from American Housewife, Birds of Prey, and Always Be My Maybe, which is a super, super funny movie. Very funny movie on Netflix. Dewdrop, the leader of the Pixie Dusters, a motorcycle gang in the film, is voiced by Gray Griffin. Gray also voices Ash Delgado on Elena of Avalor and voices Martin and Sherry and Terry in The Simpsons and provides additional voices in Frozen 2, all Disney properties. And man, is she funny as Dewdrop? Yes, I was waiting for this to be sort of my least favorite part of the movie. I was like, oh, I don't need this mm -hmm. comedy relief right now. But it was it was so, so funny. I was expecting a lot of fart jokes in this moment. Right, yeah. <laughs> Not like literally, but I'm no. like, here come the fart jokes. Exactly, exactly. And it wasn't that at all. It was a very hardcore character in a very diminutive form, and it just is hysterically funny when yes. you see that pairing. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm so glad I get to announce this next person. Tracy Ullman plays Grecklin in the movie. Tracy Ullman is known for being Tracy Ullman in every single TV show. <laughs> <laughs> and every other person in yeah. all of her TV shows. This is a true, this is a true, <laughs> true statement. She, of course, is very well known for the Tracy Ullman show, Tracy Breaks the News. She played Jack's mother in Into the Woods, a Disney property. And she's also from State of the Union. Tracy takes on, and it should be noted that The Simpsons, made their very first debut on the Tracy Ullman show thousands and thousands of years ago, yeah. which is now a Disney property. We come full circle. And speaking of another Disney connection, she played Princess Winifred in the wonderful world of Disney's Once Upon a Mattress in 2005. It's true. That is now on Disney Plus, I believe. I really hope they keep uploading the wonderful world of Disney onto Disney Plus because I want to go back and watch all these old specials and made-for-TV movies. Yeah, they should have a separate category for all of those. They should. 
I believe Bob Chapek is listening to us now, so <laughs> yeah. he's a he's a new listener. He's got a lot on his plate. He's not listening <laughs> to this podcast. <laughs> And rounding out the cast, making brief appearances in the film, we have Wilmer Valderrama from that 70s show. He voices the character of Gaxton, who is a college friend of the boy's father. He's also from My Dreams. Oh, you love him? Oh, when he pops that top off. <laughs> oof. Oof. <laughs> he also plays Nick Torres on NCIS, which I think is a show on CBS for old people. I don't know. Don't <laughs> yes. People love that. He also is the voice of Manny in Handy Manny. And as always, John Ratzenberger makes an appearance in this film. He is Pixar's good luck charm. (laughs) He voices construction worker Fenwick. He has appeared in every single Pixar film and is best known as Ham in the Toy Story franchise and Cliff Clavin on Cheers. Yes, this is his 22nd consecutive Pixar film. He's like, give me that paycheck. I mean. He comes in for five minutes. I know. I will take that money off your hands. What a perfect, perfect job. I want it. What an odd person to be your good luck charm. Yeah, out of all the voices that were in Toy Story, <laughs> you choose him as to be the one that's going to like go on and represent in every Pixar film. I wonder how that happened, if it just sort of organically happened, and then they're like, this is, this is it, this is it for yeah. us. Yeah, maybe. I would encourage Pixar to reach out to me, because I can also be a good luck charm for them. Yeah, that's fair. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. So as you said, that does round out the cast. Not a huge cast. No, it was surprising how small it was. Yeah, not a lot of characters, which was nice because the story was so big that any more characters I felt would have been too crowded. Yeah, that's a great point. A few more fun facts about the movie, Adam. This is the very first Pixar film with zero involvement from John Lasseter. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. Am I right, folks? And a weird fun fact for you, Adam, is that this is the first Pixar film that was not released in either May, June, or November. All other Pixar films were released in those three months. I'm struggling to remember what month we're actually in, but you're right, we're in March, (laughs) and that's not one of those months. That is interesting. I wonder why that is. I wonder if they were anticipating to put it into one of those slots, and for whatever reason, they had to kind of move it around. Like, maybe there was trouble with the film, or they just got done with it earlier than expected. Yeah, that's very interesting. Or maybe they were just, yeah, like you said, not expecting this to be a huge summer blockbuster or a holiday film. Oh, yeah, sure. But I guess they were right in that sense. It's not, in my prediction, going to be a blockbuster hit. No. But I think it is going to be a fan favorite in the Pixar catalog. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, the scope of it, while it is kind of an epic journey, the scope of the story is a little bit more focused, I would say. Like, it's not going to have a broad appeal of like Mm. a Finding Nemo where, you know, little kids and adults are going to find something in it. I think that this story dealing with the kind of heavier issues that it does is going to speak to kind of a more, a smaller audience. But a very appreciative audience at the same time. Only smart people will like this movie. That's what I'm trying to say, but I just couldn't get it out. Only smart people will really love this movie. Yes. (laughs) So if you don't like this movie, Adam thinks you're stupid. You said it first. I said Adam thinks you're stupid first? No, I just agreed with your statement. Mm, Fair, 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 fair. You may not be emotionally connected is what I'm trying to say. Seek therapy if you didn't cry when you watched this movie. (laughs) Seek therapy immediately. Well, we had a number of Tweedledees reach out to us with their reviews on the film, Patrick. So this would be a great opportunity for us to kind of dive into these reviews and then also kind of expand upon them with our thoughts as we dig through them. Sensible. I always love hearing what our Tweedledees think of these films. First up, we have Adrian, who you can find on Instagram, at DisneyXAdrian. Adrian says, I wasn't that excited going in because I didn't care for the trailer. However, the movie was excellent. The characters were interesting. It tugged on my heartstrings, but it also made me laugh at many points. Also, there is a scene where the female cop says she has trouble with her girlfriend's daughter. And although it's super subtle, the acknowledgement of LGBTQ plus relationship and parenting was so amazing to see. This movie surprised me. And all in all, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Such a specific number. Very specific. But I agree, this was a surprising 
film. You know, we had mentioned in an earlier episode, I believe it was when the trailer dropped, Patrick, that we were getting strong Shrek vibes from the trailer. Yeah. And so I think walking into that, you know, we were thinking, is this going to be like Shrek? You know, there is kind of a comparison in that kind of like medieval genre realm and making jokes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But this is a far more elevated script than what Shrek had to offer. You know, again, going back to fart jokes, there's just (laughs) not as much of that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Moving on, we have Kim writing in. Kim is on Instagram, Kim Chi. Kim says, two words, Tom Holland. (laughs) He is my everything and must be protected at all costs, LOL. Aside from my love for Tom Holland, I thought the movie was so cute. I kind of feel like we don't get a satisfying enough ending. But overall, the movie had a really sweet storyline that gave me all the feels. You best believe I was tearing up at the end. Kim, I love you, but I have to disagree with you here. I thought the ending was so, so strong. Yeah. And again, a really interesting choice made. I can't talk about it here, but when you see the film, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was incredibly emotional. You're right, Kim. Like, I was full on ugly, like, mushed up face crying. (laughs) I was embarrassed for myself and, like, trying to control the mechanics of my face, but it just could not be done. And I was crying heavily. Yes, you should always be embarrassed for having emotions, Adam. I'm a man in America, Patrick. (laughs) That's how we're taught to live. Trevor, who you can find on Instagram at Trevor Roleg, said, I saw an advanced screening of Onward on Leap Day, and I didn't stop crying tears of joy for a full hour after it ended and ugly sobbed through the credits. The Lightfoot brothers are some of my new favorite Pixar characters, and I relate to Barley so much it isn't even funny. His story and struggles specifically, as well as his overall personality, resonated with me on a deep and personal level because I saw so much of my Self in him. I am a huge fan of the modern urban fantasy aesthetics, and the world of Onward is one I want to explore again and again. I'm a big time Dungeons and Dragons player, and seeing all of the Easter eggs and references to the game itself put the biggest smile on my face, even though I know most of them are going to fly over the average viewer's head. Onward was everything I wanted it to be and more. It is officially my all time favorite Pixar movie, and I cannot wait to see it again this Saturday. Saturday. That's a really good point. I am not a Dungeons and Dragons player, but I did pick up on quite a few references, and I'm sure there are many, many more that absolutely, as Trevor said, went right over my head. I had all of them go over my head, I think. <laughs> but so smart for Pixar to kind of weave in those elements into the story and really provide a guide map for Ian and Barley to follow on their journey. It was fun to see that kind of play out throughout the film. Quite literally. Literally. <laughs> Jason writes into us from Instagram. Jason does nerdy stuff. Jason says, caught the 6 p.m. show of Onward on Thursday night and loved every second of it. I was crying through a lot of it, and it gave me all the feels. This is quite the theme we have going here. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) A great story about family and brothers. I don't want to say anything else about it for fear of spoilers, so I'm done. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Also got an official nifty pin at AMC for free. Time to add it to my three pin shadow boxes. I feel like Jason is rubbing that in our face. A little bit. All get pins. Wait, are you going to cut it up into three pieces and put it into all three boxes? That's ruining the value, Jason. Jason, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Ryan, who you can find on Instagram at Space Ranger Ryan, wrote in to say, Y'all, when I say this movie made me ugly cry, it made me ugh. Uh, Lee cry. <laughs> this is my <laughs> new favorite Disney movie. This is the first movie I have ever watched that explores the complexity of losing a parent at an early age and mourning the relationship that could have been. I lost my mother at an early age, and this was the first time that I've seen a movie portray how I have felt. And the ending, when, no spoilers, I won't do that to you, made me think about my best friend who I consider my own brother. I felt every and all feels Fiend. (laughs) Multilingual, Ryan. Ryan, I absolutely agree with you. As many of you know, I lost my father, but I was an adult when that happened. But there is that longing that you feel once you've lost someone so close to you that you want to be able to have another moment with them, even if it's just for a second of time. And you're constantly reflecting on, could I have said this or could I have said that? And I can only imagine when you've lost someone when you're so young how that feels to not be able to have the conversation that you want to with that person. So in all honesty, I consider myself very lucky that I was able to say the things that I wanted to to my dad. But the level of angst you must experience 
not being given that option must just be really awful and frustrating. Right. As Ryan so eloquently said, mourning the relationship that could have been, that is such a very specific, almost not even a loss, Mm. but a longing. You know what I mean? And so smart then to mention those in your life that kind of take up the mantle of a father or a mother and really come into your life and provide that leadership or support that you need. It's important to embrace those people. And that movie kind of really embraces that idea. Amen. Next up, we have Eric writing in from Instagram at Mando3625. Eric says, not the best Pixar movie, but very enjoyable. Second half was better than the first. It's Pixar, so naturally it tugs at your heartstrings. I give it four out of five stars. I didn't find the story or the characters as compelling as past Pixar movies. Also, The Simpsons short, freaking adorable. Yes, Disney kind of welcomes The Simpsons into their family of animated programming by giving us a short before the movie starts. That was freaking adorable, as Eric says. Moving on to your critique of the movie, Eric, I think this speaks to how both of us were saying earlier on in this episode that it almost didn't feel like a Pixar movie. Yeah. So I wonder if that's what you were grasping onto, the fact that it didn't feel so Pixar-y, and maybe that's not why it's one of your favorite Pixar movies. But four to five stars isn't too bad, Eric. Not too bad at all. Andy writes in. You can find Andy on Instagram at andyjheath73. My first question is, Andy, where's your voice memo? What the heck? We've shamed him into not sending in voice memos anymore. We've scared him away. (laughs) Andy says, I've just watched Pixar's Onward, which was utterly wonderful. The animation is breathtaking. And once again, they've managed to bring a warm, funny, and touching story to a slightly bonkers concept. I'm so glad I had some tissues in my pocket at the end. As always, it's 10 out of 10 in every department. And hey, Tom Holland and Chris Pratt together, right? Right. (laughs) We didn't even talk about the animation, but the animation is phenomenal. And an interesting combination, too, right? Because you had the mythical elements, but then I was noticing, like, when Guinevere, which is Barley's van, is driving down the street, like, the water on the streets was so realistic and authentic looking. So they kind of played this fine line of, like, heightened fantasy, but then also some really kind of very realistic elements within the animation. Yes, which is also kind of represented in the movie itself in that it is a mix between sort of an urban city and a mythical land as well. It was a really, really well done uh, juxtaposition between the two. And my boyfriend Matthew mentioned as we were driving home that he now wants blue hair. Oh, I can see him with blue hair, actually. (laughs) I'm guessing you're not on board with that. I'm on board with it if he wants to do it. He just doesn't have the volume needed (laughs) to like fully achieve that yin look you know he had the curls and Mm. the the thick blue hair that's what extensions are for adam oh you're right (laughs) (laughs) giving him some ideas last but not least we have derek writing in from instagram at boy who has everything oh i'm so glad i got to do that again i'm happy for you derek always write into us you earned that (laughs) thank you so much derek says i really enjoyed it it was such a fun adventure movie full of heart the film kept such a quick pace and the heartfelt moments hit when i least expected them causing multiple silent cries i especially loved how unpredictable the quest was and how quickly i grew attached to every single character this felt fresh energetic and well balanced that is a really succinct critique of the movie very well written derek and i think sums up what both patrick and i experienced watching the film although i did not silent cry i audibly cried (laughs) (laughs) derek took a mother courage approach and just (laughs) let it silently scream out of his body what a good reference adam (laughs) the deep cut that six people will understand (laughs) well thank you to all of our tweedledees who wrote in with their thoughts on the movie So it sounds like, Adam, you and I are sort of lockstep in our opinions about this movie. It was a really beautiful film, an unexpected turn from Pixar and Disney, I would say. Unexpected is a great word for this movie because I really didn't have any idea going in what fully to expect. And my perception of the trailer had kind of heavily influenced what I thought I was going to be seeing. And that wasn't the case at all. It was a much more mature story with some really funny fantastical, and heartfelt moments. Yeah, going back to Dan Scanlon and 
the inspiration behind this film, it definitely felt like an ode and a tribute to his father and his family. Mm-hmm. It was a really, I, I felt like I was sort of let in on a family story. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I have some questions for you, Patrick. Great. Is this one that you feel like you'll be able to watch again and again? Or is this kind of one that you're going to need some distance in between viewings? Or do you even want to watch it again and again? That is a good question. I was actually thinking about this on the way home from the movie last night. And I would like to see it again. I don't know that I can emotionally handle it again and again and again. uh, In that it's just such a deep, almost unsettling story. And I mean that in, in, in the best way possible. But there are... Because it is a Disney and Pixar movie, so many Easter eggs that I kind of want to go back and watch for. Um, but I don't know that I need to see it in repetition, mm-hmm. on, on rotation, I guess. But I would like to see it again. What about you? I don't think I can do it again, or at least not anytime soon. But I do have a tendency to watch these really emotional movies when I'm on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> when everyone around me can just see me full on bawling. Yeah, fair. So I have a feeling the next time I'm flying anywhere, I'll probably choose this as an option and just sip my wine and sob at the same time. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. And of course, I do mean that in, like I said, the best way possible that I don't need to see it again because it, yeah, it's it's heavy. It's a heavy material movie. It's very cathartic. Like you do feel a release watching it. Yeah. At least I felt very light leaving the movie because <laughs> not only was it so well done, And the story is so complex, but I got out some emotions and some things that I had experienced, and it kind of made me feel great leaving, like I recognized myself in this movie. My second question for you, Patrick, Mm. is do you see this universe being extended? Like Matthew and I were talking on the drive home, do you see another story out of these characters? A hundred percent. I think either on Disney Plus as a cartoon, or I can absolutely see this turning into a sequel. That's a really good point that I did not think about. A Disney Plus cartoon kind of in the vein of Tangled. Yeah, sort of mini short adventures. Yeah, totally. These two characters, Ian and Barley, have such a great chemistry together. Mm-hmm. And you could see them kind of going on mini quests in a episodic type television show. For sure. I assume that is your answer as well to your own question. Yes, absolutely. I'd love to see it. In TV or in a movie or both? Yes, absolutely. I'd love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I feel like maybe... TV, more so on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure a sequel would live up to the weight of this first movie. I feel like it might be too light or too much of a letdown, but it would be fun to see these stories extended on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I did feel like they sort of left that door open to explore. And it is a big world, right? Like, I'm sure there's plenty of stories that could be told. This was obviously a very important story, but it would be fun to see kind of lighter, shorter stories told and a larger explanation of this fantastic world that was created from this film. I have to believe those unicorns are going to get their own short. (laughs) Yes. Don't you think? The unicorns are hysterically funny. Hilarious. (laughs) And they kept popping up just just so quickly in in many random scenes. I was like, it was like looking for little Easter eggs. Yeah, you know, what's interesting was that the gnomes from the trailer didn't really make as large of an appearance as I thought they were going to in the film. Yeah, they sort of highlighted them in the trailer and didn't really see much of them in the movie. Which was fine. Yeah, I'm sure there's a ton of material on the cutting room floor from this film. There has to be. I want to see it. (laughs) All of it. (laughs) Well, as we said, thank you to all of our Tweedledees who wrote into us who saw the movie very early. Some of you a couple weeks ahead of time. And if you are still going to see the movie, please leave us your opinions so we can give you a little shout out in our next episode. You can reach out to us on social media. That's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at GDTD Podcast. Or you can leave us an email or a voice memo at info at gaysdothed.com. Patrick, what grand and glorious quest can we go on? I say we go on a quick quest, Adam, to the kingdom of D. Oh, yeah. It sounds like the rating might be a little bit more adult than onwards. Not safe for work. Not (laughs) NSFW. I really had to. It took you a long time. Hey, Adam. Hey, Patrick. It's time for some quick D Adam tonight. <laughs> Looking for some quick D Adam tonight.
day. I don't know. You've changed it just enough that we owe no royalties <laughs> on that song. Good for you. Thank you so much. What a parody. What a parody. Well, as I said, Adam. Yeah. Moments ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It's time for some quick D. Fantastic. I'm so very excited. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, get out of town, but welcome to the show. <laughs> quick D is where Adam and I ask each other a question we have not been privy to prior to recording, and we answer off the cuff. All those new listeners we welcomed earlier, get out of town. Get out of town. But also welcome. But thank you for listening. <laughs> hopefully last episode wasn't your first episode. And last episode. Yeah. Hopefully this is your last episode. What? Wait. Oh. What a tangled web I've weaved <laughs> just now. I can't get out of it. I'm trapped. What a tangled web you've weaved. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, are you ready for some quick D? I am. We're doing question, right? Did you already say that? Did you already go through that? Quick D classic. Quick D classic. I'm not I'm not paying attention very I know. much at this point. I know. I know. Okay. Well, Adam. Yeah. It has just been released that Onward 2, mm. just a little further, <laughs> is coming. Great. <laughs> uh, it's in the works, and we are going to be featured in the film, Adam. Great. What will our mythical creature representations be? Okay, but we're not the same mythical creature. We're two different mythical creatures. Ooh, unexpected. But we're like a, a duo, like a buddy duo. Okay, a duo Is that a what you just said? <laughs> yeah. You is know, that like a badeo? A badeo. <laughs> Badeo. Yeah, we are right in the toilet, aren't we? <laughs> Another parody. <laughs> All right, so we're like buddies, but like opposites, kind of like an odd couple situation. Oh, okay. And you're a fairy. You're a very petite <laughs> fairy, but you have the base, you know, the basando, is that what it's called? The very low bass voice of a very Ooh. white... Okay. Okay. So you have a very deep voice. So who's going to voice act me then? <laughs> James Earl Jones. Great. Yeah. I identify as such. The character's name is Darth Vader. <laughs> because you're ever so fey. Yeah. But you're pink. Thank you. And glittering. I love it. And quite beautiful. Wow. Thank you. It's a stretch. Oh, wow. You know how sometimes the animators will adapt characteristics of the person recording the voice into mm. the character? Mm -hmm. Did not do that no. with you. No. Just, you're, my, you're, just you're, my fingers and toes you're gorgeous. Made, it, made the cut. <laughs> you're gorgeous, yeah. Wow. Your, ha your hairy fingers and toes made the cut. Wow. <laughs> How very dare you. I wax them every morning. I didn't realize this was going to turn into a Bash Patrick segment, but it's still Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you woke up today, didn't you? <laughs> like, time to record an episode. Yeah. <laughs> what have I got in my back pocket that I can just beat Patrick down with? Wow. Wow. No, you're lovely. You're lovely. Oh, good. And so is your character, Darth Vader. Thank you. My character, different from yours, Great. is a giant mm. ogre. Oh, who performs as a ballerina <laughs> and truly embraces a more artistic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think a giant ogre would be artistic. You'd think he'd be kind of a lug. Yeah. But this is a very well-spoken character, okay. unlike me. Yeah, <laughs> and... I was going to say, well, I have any editing to do. Uh... A giant, massive beast of an ogre in a tutu <laughs> and just a sweet, gentle soul. I love it. Yeah, so whereas you're kind of gruff and tumble tiny mm. i'm giant and delicate i love this this is actually just us mm. i've described it's not really okay <laughs> it's not really <laughs> any different than what we already are that's true you do wear a lot of tutus <laughs> i wish <laughs> i have the waistline for it well you do wear a lot of tool oh wait no you are a lot of tool i am a lot there of tool. it is there it is <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think we'd be a hit though? I think I think there's life for these characters beyond the film. We would mm. be, you know, our own series, mm -hmm. a fabulous meet and greet in the parks, <laughs> and it would be us too. It would just be us. That's M E A T meet and greet. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> what a successful quick D on my part. <laughs> You're so humble today. <laughs> Yay, Adam. <laughs> All right, Patrick, I have a question for you. Do you, though? I actually don't, so I'm stalling for time. Great. <laughs> but here is the question that's coming your way. Everyone's on the edge of turning this off. In the news segment, Patrick, we had talked about the fact that Hocus Pocus 2, being created for Disney+, Plus, has found its director in Adam Shankman. Mm -hmm. Very, very exciting. Very exciting. But it's time to bring Hocus Pocus into the parks as more of a presence and not just a stage show. Thank goodness. Let's turn it into a ride, Patrick. I want a Hocus Pocus ride. Mm -hmm. Take us through that experience. Well, much like Mr. Toad's Wild Adventure ends, Adam, you start this ride in hell. 
that seems entirely appropriate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. where the Sanderson sisters probably were, right? Yes. Or are now at the end of the original Hocus Pocus. Yep, yep. We can assume. Absolutely. So it's a roller coaster launch out of hell. <sighs> I freaking love this already. Into Salem. Fantastic. Right? Yes. And then you're riding on a broomstick, of course. Amazing. Right into the village where they burn you. And that's the end of the ride. <laughs> they just set you on fire. <laughs> ride complete. <laughs> is there a fast pass for this? <laughs> it is an F ticket event. <laughs> this is why I'm not in charge of creative at, <laughs> at Disney. <laughs> this is the only reason. <laughs> That will do it for this episode of Gaze Do the D. Thanks for listening. To become a patron of the podcast, visit our website at gazedothed.com slash donate. For a donation of any amount, you can receive exclusive Gaze Do the D content and help us continue to bring you the very best Disney news and discussion. Continue the conversation after this episode on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GDTD Podcast and submit your questions or show ideas to info at gazedothed.com. Have a great week, everybody. See you real soon.